How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the 100 Snap Circuits set. It goes for about $21 on Amazon. So it's a very low price way to get into electronics and there's not much math involved. So this is a really fun way to do it. My sister bought one of these for my nephew and I was going over some of the circuits with him and I realized that a lot of people could benefit from this if they do not have an uncle that has an electrical engineering degree. If you are six years old even, and you can just whip through this, learn a lot of electronics without even reading a book. And you can just watch this video and I'll explain everything to you. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link for this particular one down in the video description below. With that said, let's just open this up. Experiment one to 101, the 300 version has a second book. The first book looks exactly like this. The 300 version also has a grid that is exactly the same size. It just has less of these components. All of this snaps together. And the basic premise here is you're trying to connect a circuit in a loop. You have to connect metal together in order to make a circuit. That's how electrons flow. First of all, you need to add some battery to this. So you need to get some fresh batteries that's not included. We put it in here. And if you flip it over, you can see that it connects the battery in a circuit to these two little buckle nubs here. We're not even gonna read any of this. Seriously, I think if you're eight years old, you probably won't go around reading everything. And you don't have to because I'm just gonna explain everything to you. You can watch this video and kind of learn from this without even having to buy this little kit thing. So let's just build circuit one here. Over here, there's a grid space. It's nice to follow along and there are polarity. Sometimes you don't want to flip it around even though it looks the same on both ways. So let's just put the battery here, lamp, socket, a three position connector. If you look at these connectors, if you flip it over, it's just a metal bar with these little buckle things on it. So these guys have no direction. So you can put it this way or this way. And we're gonna put the lamp on and we have a switch. Let's just put it on there. And these light switches are just like the light switches you see in your home. You just flip it. This is the same exact thing. The light bulb is the same thing as the lights you see in the house. So whenever you switch it, this is effectively the same thing. So you turn it on. Well, it's not gonna turn on. Why is it not turn on? turning on? Well, there we go. You see what happened there? Sometimes if things don't turn on, you just gotta move things around a little bit because you don't know if maybe some metal is not perfectly connecting or not. So what I did was just kind of move it around and boom, it works. Now it works. You can turn it off, turn it on, and you're basically connecting a circuit here when you turn the light switch off, you're disconnecting the circuit. There are no metal touching. So when you turn on the switch, the metal touches and current flows through and you have the light turn on. This little battery thing, what I notice is there's a little bit of a fuse, I believe it's in here. This is just in case if you happen to connect it directly and you short circuit, that little fuse might trip and you'll essentially break this thing so don't go around short circuiting this thing. In other words, don't put one of these little metal wires across your battery. Project number two involves a motor and the switch. You're just replacing the previous lamp with a motor, but you gotta take care that the polarity is actually on one of the sides. There's a positive sign on one side and you want this closer to the battery side. It's not a big deal if you flip the motor over, it's just going to spin the other way, but let's just put it in, in the right way for now. We have it turn on, I'm gonna turn it off, and then there's this little uh, helicopter looking thing. We're just gonna put it right on top of that, turn it on. And this is actually blowing air this way, and I can kind of feel it. It's not too effective over here, but if I turn it off, it's not gonna fly anywhere, but, I'm just gonna get a little advanced here because you can just flip this around while this whole circuit is here. And then we can just turn it on. Now the air is blowing the other way because you flip the circuit the other way. And if I turn it off, I think this is, yep, this is gonna fly up. So the same thing happened with my nephew. Uh, we actually did not care too much about the polarity of this motor in the beginning. Two experiments done already. Now we know how to turn on a light bulb. We also know how to turn on a motor. 
Keep in mind though, the light bulb in the house, it's a lot higher voltage, it's 110 volts. So you don't wanna go mess around the house lights or anything and trying to connect wires. This is only three volts here because it's battery power. So this is safe for you to experiment on, but you definitely don't want to go around touching the sockets of the house because it's 110 volts not three. Now we're going to do number three. Let me show you how I personally build this thing. I'm gonna look over here and I see that there's one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is where the battery starts. So one, two, three, four, fifth one battery starts over here. So I'm gonna use this lower left corner as a reference point. I'm gonna build everything from there. And then it says it needs a four. So I'm gonna grab one of these. These guys separate out. You don't just use the whole thing. So there's a four piece here. I'm gonna put it there. There's a two piece. I'm gonna put it there. There's a music IC. We put it here. There's another two piece. We put it here. There's a five unit connector. We're going to put it, skip one, put it up here. There's a switch. Put it there. It asked for this WC thing. So we're gonna put this over here. And then there's a three unit here. Connect the speaker, connect another one on the other side of the speaker. We put it here. So now we turn it on and it's quite loud. This circuit is on. There is an input to this music IC and there's a switch here, but this is not really a switch. This is kind of like a piezoelectric thing. If it senses vibration, it's gonna generate a voltage. And this voltage is gets sensed by the music IC. So if you do a loud knock or something, whew, seems like it's not quite sensitive, I think. So I gotta tap on it. Yeah. There is an output to the speaker here and you don't actually have to connect everything exactly the way the picture looks like. Sometimes you can connect the same thing with like a couple more of these little bars or like you can stack another one on top and it's going to still work. See, I'm, I can go like this, put another one here because I'm just connecting the circuit the exact same thing over. So see, if I can, I can turn it on, it still works. I'm gonna turn it off. Now I can also connect this end of the speaker to any one of these points on the top bar over here, including on the switch. We turn it on, it still turns on. I'm gonna connect it to this side, turn it on, it still turns on. What is unclear is how these music ICs work. It does seem like power needs to go in from the middle here. The power return, which means you need to connect the other side of the battery in order to power the music IC, goes out over here. There's a switch input that goes here. We're not connecting to this. I'm not too sure what this is for now. And this is the audio output over here. That's why it's connected to the speaker. Now we're done with this experiment. There's, that's all there is to it. So let's move on to the next one. I'm not gonna build it exactly as they say because we're gonna want to save some time over here. I recommend to do this for all ages because you want to be more creative doing this stuff. Whatever stuff that you have done over here, you don't wanna repeat. So I'm just gonna remove the speaker for now. Look at the similarities between this and that. It's just stretched one unit over. So I'm just gonna remove this guy, remove this guy, remove the battery, move it over one unit. It wanted a six unit over here, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's just put another one of these guys over here. And then I need to connect a switch. But this guy here is now two units high, and this is one unit high. So let's just make it equal on the leveling. And now we can connect this because now it's level. Now we put the speaker. This is a little high also, so I'm gonna put a one unit there and then put a two unit there. Now we connected one side of the speaker. Let's connect the other side with this 100 ohm resistor. Resistors resist the flow of current. If you connect this in the circuit, it's going to make the current flow less. We're gonna connect this to the speaker over here and we just got this one little piece left, we need a three unit, connect that. And the way I'm doing this might use up extra pieces. So you might not be able to do this later on where it just use up every single piece 
there is in this kit. So for now, we can take a little bit of shortcut like this until we actually run out, then we have to go, oh my gosh, we have to like kind of disassemble this and build it exactly like it is. So let's turn it on. And if you can tell, the audio is a lot lower now. And then we can also use the switch again. Okay, that's all there is to this experiment. You just add a resistor in series with the speaker and you lowered the volume. That's all I'm gonna do for this introduction video over here. Experiments one to four, it turns out only. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I might just continue with this series and buy every single project out there and just keep on making them on video and explaining it to you guys. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more.